Hey guys, my name's Lauren and in today's video I'm wanting to show you a really easy basic setup to hatch your own brine shrimp for your fish and corals. If you're anything like me, it has to be easy to do and simple to set up, otherwise I just won't do it. I had sea monkeys when I was a kid and can I just say I totally appreciate that they have kept the packaging pretty much identical to when I was a kid. I think that's awesome. So that was the last time I had live brine shrimp was back in those days. I've never really liked the look of brine shrimp stations. Um, and you know, maybe if I had a big garage to chuck it in, um, it'd be fine. It, actually, you know what? I'm probably gonna end up there one day with a big brine shrimp hatchery. But for the moment, I wanted to, you know, at least start doing this once or twice a week. And I just wanted to make do and it to sort of fit in with what I've already got. So I'm gonna show you today how I've done it. For those of you who've been following me for a while, this is my freshwater tank. Well, one of my freshwater tanks with a little school of Harlequin Tetras um, right next to the fridge, because I found some snakes here. So this tank is actually run on a sponge filter, which means I've got an air pump underneath um, and it actually has two lines. One's obviously being used for the tank and the other one's spare. So I thought I needed an air pump for the hatchery. Uh, you can actually do it without an air pump, but you're gonna get a better hatch rate with an air pump. Your original sea monkeys didn't come with an air pump and they still hatch. So it's totally doable without an air pump, but you're gonna get a better hatch rate with an air pump. You wanna get yourself a bottle. Um, it can be any type of bottle, just as long as it's got a nice little funnel down the end there. Um, so you wanna grab one of those. If it's had soft drink in it, give it a really good rinse out so that you're not giving your brine shrimp a sugar high when you put them in there. So I'm just gonna take off the cap and just cut around the top. Perfect. There you go. So now we've got our bottle. We want to go ahead and super glue one end of the airline tubing down the bottom, but not at the very bottom, but just, I don't know if you can see that there. Not, not at the very bottom, but just sort of there. You don't need a huge amount, but just enough so that it'll stick in there. So now we've got that glued to the side. We'll just put the lid back on. So that is all ready to go. So that's your hatchery complete. Next up, we grab some salt water. So with your salt water, if you don't already have a salt water tank, that's okay. You can go ahead and set one up, especially for your brine shroom. <laughs> and once you've set up your salt water marine tank, you just go ahead and take some water out of it. Alternatively, if you don't want to set up a salt water tank, you can buy some aquarium salt um, and mix that up. Or you can collect some natural sea water if it's legal to do so where you are. Or you can make up your own salt water with non-iodized salt and a pinch of baking soda. Obviously, this is my recommended method, having a salt water tank for your brine shrimp hatchery. <laughs> All right, now we have our salt water and we've got our lime tubing going in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop it into the tank and I'm just gonna clip it onto the side with a clip. Now I'm gonna connect this side to the air pump and get the bubbles happening. All that's left to do now is add in the brine shrimp eggs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I wanted to utilize the fact that this tank already had a light on it and it had a spare air pump line that I could use for this because I didn't want to have to set up a whole new station for it. So the water in the tank is going to make sure that the hatchery stays the right temperature for the eggs. And also I've got the light already on there, so it's already set up. So all that's left to do now is wait 24 hours and then our brine strip will be all hatched and ready to go to feed to our fish and corals. All right, so here we are just over 24 hours later and we have ourselves some beautiful brine shrimp. And I just need to say, I'm so excited. Um, I, I have another freshwater tank with panda corys in it and I've just spotted some babies. I was literally just cleaning out their tank then and I've spotted some panda cory babies. So this brine shrimp could not have been made at a better time. All right, back on track. So now that that's all done, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the air pump. So it's gonna start settling now and I'm gonna turn this light off because the brine shrimp are always attracted to the light. So I'm gonna turn that one off and I'm gonna get a little light and shine it at the bottom here or a big light because that's all I can find. So I'm gonna set this up to shine towards the bottom and all of the live brine shrimp will go down to the bottom and the eggs will settle at the top. So, so I'm gonna let that sit for a while and wait for all the brine shrimp to make their way down to the bottom. Once pretty much all of them have settled to the floor, you can get your turkey baster 
or you can even get a straw if you don't have one of these and put your finger on the other end to create the suction for it to pick it up. You wanna suction it from the bottom to collect all the live brine shrimp and try and not get the eggs. All right, let's go feed some of this to the fish and corals. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video today, guys, on how I am hatching my brine shrimp for my fish and corals. And don't forget, if you are new, to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.